Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at the Morphine M9 Intel N100. Now, this is a great office mini PC that does everything you need. Now, it's not going to play all your AAA listed games, but it'll do all your needs like Office, Outlook 365, YouTube streaming at 4K, whether you've got dual monitor set up, this can do it all. This is everything you get inside the box. You're going to get your HDMI cable, you're going to get your wall bracket. This is so you can mount it on the wall. You also get your power adapter here. Now, because this has been sent for a review, they've sent me a two pronged connector here, but I'm pretty sure you should get the right adapter for your particular country. It's got a barrel connector on here. You've got your user manual here and the actual mini PC itself. Let's just take a look at the actual front of the mini PC. You've got a piano black finish on here with their logo on the front. It does have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, USB ports on here on the front, and there's two more on the back, which we'll take a look at in a second. We do have the power button. And remember, this does have the Alder Lake, uh, the N100, which is a very new release from Intel, and that is on this uh, actual mini PC here. Got some ventilation on this side here, so you can uh, dissipate the heat. And let's move it around the other side. Got another one here for more ventilation. And on the back, we do have access to our power input here. As our audio jack on there, which a lot of people requested, we have our HDMI 2.0, two of those on the here, one gigabit ethernet port here, and there's those two USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, ports on here. And a little strip at the top for our exhaust fan. So on the bottom, we do have those little bracket hooks here. And again, I'm just gonna quickly unscrew this so we can have a look inside to see what the inside looks like. Now these do sell with bare bones and also with other configurations. So make sure you get the right configuration for uh, your needs. These are pretty affordable mini PC. So if you're looking for a very affordable mini PC, the more fine M9 is a pretty good option. So I've removed these screws here now, and then we can have a look inside uh, of the components that comes with this mini PC. Now bear in mind that you can get a bare bones one, so we've got our crucial RAM here. This has 32 gigabytes of RAM. Unfortunately, it looks like it's only got one slot for RAM, not dual channel. We have that uh, NVMe drive in here as well. This is a 500 gigabyte NVMe drive. So if you're buying this as bare bones, you can put up to 32 gigabytes of RAM inside uh, this machine, which is DDR4, and it's also 3200 megahertz. Now there is a... Uh, NVMe drive in here as well, but it's also a slot M.2 2242. So you could put theoretically another bit of storage in here, and you've got our NVMe drive on here as well, which is going to give us pretty fast speeds. Only one slot for your RAM here. Let me just quickly remove this and take a closer look just in case. And as you can see, there is only one slot on here, which is a bit disappointing, which means it's going to run on single channel, but it will have up to 32 gigabytes on here. So that's the inside of the actual unit here. Now it does support Wi-Fi 6 as well, and it does have Bluetooth on here as well. There is the full specifications. Now it does have the Order Lake N100 in here, which goes up to 3.7 uh, gigahertz, which has four cores and four threads, and also six megabytes of cache, six watts of TDP on this one, which isn't too bad for a chip of this nature. Now again, what you're looking at here is a maximum wattage on here of around about probably nine watts, which isn't too bad if you want to have a unit that's running very low wattage. So all in all, a pretty decent little spec for a, a budget sort of uh, office PC, really. So here is the website of Morphine, and you can see here we're looking at the bare bones here. This means you would obviously have to put a drive and some memory in here. And uh, again, if you wanted to, get something like this it'll be around about $198 on their website now you can configure this to your needs whether you want 16 gigabytes of RAM or one terabyte of storage or you want uh, for instance 500 uh, gigabytes of NVMe with 32 gigabytes of RAM you can see that then goes up to about $425 and you can choose your country adapter here UK US EU and AU. Now, if you've purchased the bare bones one, you're going to need a license key. And CD Key Sales is the sponsor of this video. You can check out the links in the video description and purchase yourself a Windows 10 Pro or Windows 11 Pro OEM key. All you need to do is click on one of the links in the video description, put in my promo code capital B capital R09, apply this to your order, and get a 30% discount 
Once they send you your license key, you can go to the activation center and activate your version of Windows of your choice. So let's get back to the actual review here and take a look at the temperatures because this is quite a common question that I get all the time. So let's take a look at the thermals for the Intel N100, which is a new release from uh, Intel. So as you can see, all the specs are on the right hand side of the CPU and we've got all the uh, temperatures and voltages and everything on the left. So I'll go through these so you can see exactly what it is and I'll run a quick benchmark on here to test the CPU to see whether it gets super hot. Let's go to the benchmark here and start the stress of the CPU here and you should see the package of the temperature here start to climb. It doesn't climb that much you can see from its normal temperature. It's only going up to like 75 Celsius and back down to 72. So it's fluctuating up and down, which is quite a good temperature for a mini PC. Now, if you look at the processor, it's at 100%, which means it's running at full tilt. And you can see the watts being drawn here is around about at 10 and 11, uh, around that sort of mark. So it sort of fluctuates a little bit. And again, we are running at full clock speed here, and you can see the clock speed running there. So it is a pretty decent PC for keeping those temperatures down, especially being a mini PC. Some of these can run hot. I've done this test before, and some of them just go whacking straight up to near 90 and 100 uh, degrees Celsius, which is way too high for me. And this one is sticking around about the 70 odd which is pretty good. Now, another thing that people asked me in my previous video about these little mini PCs is can they run things like Photoshop and things like that? Well, I'm going to have GIMP on here because it's easier for me to get installed on here rather than installing uh, Photoshop. But again, you can see it loading up pretty well for GIMP 2.10. And this is a free application. And this is very similar to uh, Photoshop. But again, you can see it's loading up. It's going to take a bit of time to load up because this is the first time I've opened the actual application after installing it. But once it's open, it's going to work perfectly fine. So whether you've got Office or you've got some sort of application that you want to use, something like this is going to be perfectly fine for all your needs. So who is the more fine M9 designed for? Well, it's designed for people that want a very low wattage uh, type mini PC that can still handle 4K streaming and 4K movies. You can play them on here, no problem at all. I'll show you that in my test a little bit later on. But it's also great for programs like uh, GIMP and things like that, which you can use, which are quite intensive to uh, get started. But once they're open, you're gonna be perfectly fine doing some photo editing and stuff like that on here. Now, of course, it's not gonna be a 4K uh, rendering editing machine, because it just doesn't have that raw power, but it does have enough power to do things like this. Let's take a look at uh, the benchmarks here. We're gonna run Geekbench 6, and we'll run the CPU benchmark here so you can see exactly the sort of power you can get for your money. So for the CPU benchmark, we've got 1,107 for the single core and 2,889 on the multi-core. And you can see here the actual date and time, so you know is exactly when I did this uh, benchmark. And you've got some other information down here about the processor and how many cores it has. You can see four cores there. And we also have the base frequency and a bunch of other information, which you can go through at your own leisure if you purchase this and want to do a quick benchmark of it. And this didn't cause any sort of issues with temperatures or anything like that, as I'll show you in the GPU benchmark on Geekbench as well. So I'll quickly do the GPU uh, benchmark here and I'll open up uh, the temperature so you can see here while we're running this benchmark. Now, sometimes when you do this, some of these mini PCs will go right up. You can see the power draw on here is only around about 11 to 12 watts, which isn't too bad. And also the temperatures are pretty low as well. Now, the temperature on that NVMe drive is getting up there a little bit, and uh, I would definitely put some sort of thermal pad on there. But the score come to 3,210. So that is the score for the OpenGL score which is your GPU score, which isn't too bad. So let's do some 4K streaming and we'll do Big Buck Bunny 60 FPS 4K streaming straight off of YouTube and I'll open up stats for nerds so you can see. Now, when you start these off a little bit, you're always gonna get a few frame drops and this is quite normal, but once it stabilizes a little bit, it should be okay. You can see there on the top screen, it's not dropping any more frames. It's just dropping the odd one every now and again. I think it's stabilized now. And you can see it's working perfectly fine for 4K streaming. Let me drag this along a little bit to see 
what happens. So you can see it starts up straight away and I'm not getting any jerkiness or stuttering at all, which is very impressive for a little mini PC of this caliber and at this price point. Let's run some Jellyfish here. This is Jellyfish 120 Mbps. Also, it is 10 bit and this is going to be a 4K file and you can see it's playing this no problem at all. Silky smooth. I'll do a quick drag there and it will slow up a little bit and it's instantly uh, playing that file again. So it's a very powerful little processor of this one. I'm going to do another one here and this one's a bit more intensive. This is the 400 Mbps 4K 10 bit. And you can see here, we're going to run this as well. Now it's silky smooth there, a little bit jerky to start, but it does stabilize. And uh, this is quite a hard file to play, and it seems to be playing it okay. Let me drag this along here. There we go. A little stutter, and then it's straight into playing the video file again. And this means you can play all your favorite uh, 4K movies or stream them down with no problem at all. Let's play some retro games. It can also play retro games as well if you want to. This is PSP Gaming, and uh, again, we're doing this on an emulator, and it's having no problems playing these as well. And these are at times four and times three. I've played some of these at just to test it. And again, uh, it's having no issues whatsoever. So if you're looking for an affordable uh, mini PC, then the Morphine M9 is not a bad option at that price. I'll leave all the links and the information in the video description. This was sent for review for free, but all the opinions in this video are my own. And no one is reviewing this video before it's released. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I appreciate the support. Also, have a lovely weekend and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.